certain agency. I won't mention any more names. And it disrupts basically our our production run. So, but I had, eventually I had to train them and tell them, look, we have commitments with the customers, and you know, what's your guarantee if this influential people person would would continue buying from you? So it is a problem. Uh, it's recurring, and uh, I, I don't know with the other groups, but it's an issue that we're trying to correct, and we tell them, look. We will even help you plan out the production run. If you need one or two weavers for that particular project, we will even assist them. So the idea is not to disrupt the production. Thank you. So Tito Mike, if I may, um, the community isn't exclusive to just serving your company as the client. They also serve other um, clients. I'll be honest with you, I'm collaborating with seven other companies here in Artofino. That's beautiful, right? We're and, all working and, for this. And same. collaboration is the only way to go to make things right. sustainable. That's yeah. part of our sustainable strategy. Uh, because at the end of the day, we have to make we have to guarantee that all these weavers will work yes. all year round. Yes. What happens if it's just that three there's months? There's consistent demand. So we have to come up with strategies to let them work or else uh, they'll starve. Especially that area there in Kabangkalan, it's pretty remote. And just to go down, well, hopefully with the new roads, <laughs> things would improve. So you've had initiatives in trying to really um, professionalize the way things are run in the community yeah. and establishing systems. Yes, definitely a system. You need a system. Okay, the sign process alone is a system in itself. But uh, more importantly, even basic accounting, you have to keep track of your inventory. You have to come up with a system or else you lose track or they probably they will overcharge you. But more importantly, I have to mention this, my wife and I, we took up weaving also. Right. Basic and advanced. We had to understand the language of weaving. So every time we deliver the raw materials, for example, we know exactly more or less the output. So, Beautiful. you know, so it's a matter of understanding where they're coming from. So you put yourself in their shoes and yes. you know. Yes. And that, I think in any business, you have to learn the ropes. And if you don't, uh, uh, you'll, you. you'll be put in a disadvantageous uh, position. Thank you, Tito. Um, for me, one of the greatest challenges, for example, is the time consumed in just going to the communities. That's why I've limited my uh, areas of communities within Region 7, which includes Cebu, Bohol, Siquijor, and Negros Oriental. Because that, um, it really takes a lot of my time to go, and because as I said, it doesn't take just one visit. It takes several. Another challenge, for example, is a lot of the communities that we deal with are really grassroots community, and they don't even have the proper communication equipment, or they don't have signal. So they have to go down very, very far to a particular town so that they get signal, and I get feedback on what happened to the prototypes. You know, over many years, over decades of doing design and manufacturing, you know, um, the success of a prototype in progress is directly proportional to the distance between the designer and the ones producing the prototypes. So if they have questions, and they do along the way, because this is an innovation, this is not what they used to do. So if they have questions and they can't communicate with me, they make up their own. And in the end, when I, if, if it was the design was meant to be a cat, it'll turn out to be a mouse. And it, by then, it'll be too late to change it because there's no more time. As you say, this is slow, slow manufacturing. So it takes, so the, the way to solve it is just for me to just keep on going there. And you can just imagine, my husband's already complaining. <laughs> How receptive are they though, Tita? Every time like you try to give them feedback or you try to improve the communication channels so they don't commit the mistake of turning the cat into a mouse. Um, well, I deal with different kinds of, of materials and um, for example, the best ones, for example, are the ones that are doing bamboo, okay? Because this, I deal with a lot of first generation or maybe second generation um, artisans. They've been working with bamboo, let's say, for example, since they were small and the bamboo are, are just grown around them and, you know, um, they didn't even plant them, they just grew. So. Um, at least it's being, in, uh, what they do influences the younger, their children, and they get to appreciate, ah, bamboos like this, and all of that, but um, th they are kind of difficult, because, you know, I get to know what is 
what is the traditional way of you working with bamboo? You know, so they, and then I asked them what, for example, um, how do you harvest? And do you have a specific traditions in harvesting? And then they said, well, we don't know, but our gr grandparents um, uh, harvest at night. But we don't know why, but I explained to them, do you know there is a scientific uh, reason for all of that? So that the woodworms will go down. The woodworms are up because it's photosynthesis during the day, there's sun. And the woodworms eat. They eat the cellulose that's inside the bamboo. You know, so all of them say, ah, is that so? So all of these things make them kind of more receptive, all right? But I have dealt and continue to deal with a lot of communities too that are just saying, ah, is that what you want us to do? We don't like that because it's difficult. We just want to do what we used to do. So I thought, so what is my purpose for being here, <laughs> right? So, well, um, a lot of problems, but that's, I don't call them problems, I call them challenges. Yes. Um, you yeah. can relate, me. <laughs> I can relate, but um, also, um, the brand's um, challenges are a little bit different, actually a lot different. Um, so uh, right now the brand primarily works with two main weaves, which is the Yakan weaves from the communities in Basilan and some in Zamboanga, um, which is completely, well at least the one in Zamboanga, the one that we go to, it's completely accessible. Zamboanga is a beautiful city. Um, uh, and and uh, the, another another weave that we work with is what I'm wearing right now, which is called the Pisyabit, which is from Sulu. It's just a little, it's just different because, um, of course, we always deal with um, security concerns. Um, we are unfortunately at the mercy of the the, the peace conflict situation there. Um, although it's accessible for, I guess, locals, um, locals and um, tausugs like myself. Um, but, you know, I mean, Sulu is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful province, right? And I actually, my mom laughs at me because she's like, you're so weird. Every time that it gets noisy for you in Manila, you want to go back to Sulu, which is like, you know, kind of like a, a little bit of a war zone in some areas. But it's my paradise. But, um, so, you know, much as like I get a lot of feedback from people like, oh, it's so beautiful there. I want to go there. Like looking at my pictures on social media. Um, I wouldn't really say that you can just go anytime. Like Zamboanga, you can go anytime. It's not a problem, but Sulu is just a little bit different. Um, so of course you have to have security. You have to have um, intel um, and all those things, right? Um, like um, maybe like a few collections ago, so I wanted to use the weave. And um, so I, I ordered the weaves from... No, actually, okay, let me tell you the story of my first time ever to meet the, the weavers there. So my brothers and I had gone to Sulu for a kind of like a immersion, an immersion and a family vacation as well. Um, so anyway, after that, we went to this, we were going inland, inland, inland. And um, as you know, inland, um, that's where the conflict um, usually is from, right? So we went, we were going inland. And um, my cousins who, are, who live in Holo talaga were starting to like tense up. And I was like, I didn't know. I was like, okay, whatever. So we go there and then we, what, we go into this village finally. That's just all the houses were weavers, right? So the Tausog um, weavers, their houses are elevated. I think similar to the northern houses, right? Like the Ifugao communities. Um, but this one, kasi they weave um, underneath their houses, yeah. Um, so beautiful. I was so overwhelmed with all the colors, all the, all the houses that had the weavers um, there. Um, and so I met the weavers. I, I, I told them what the brand was and basta, you know, I did all the, the formalities. And then, um, so when we were done, on our way out, my cousin was like, um, I'll take your picture by the sign of the barangay. I was like, it's a rusty tarpaulin, like butas butas na. Parang I, parang I don't get why you would wanna take my photo there. And he was like, basta basta, let's take a photo. I was like, okay, whatever. So we took a photo there, and then we were on our way out. And then on our way out, my cousin was like, actually, the reason why I wanted to take your photo there is because we're probably never coming back. This is the la first and last time we're ever coming to this village because this village is uh, mostly an Abu Sayyaf village. And then I looked around me, and then my cousin was like, look. And then I looked around me, and I saw a bunch of deactivated landmines. So I knew that, um, and I was told that when we, the, when we went there two, two months prior, 
<laughs> I know, matapang ako. I don't know. Um, but two months, two months before um, we went there, two months prior, there was a, a war that that happened there. Um, so those those are the challenges, right? And then so my story, kanina a few collections ago. So I wanted to use the weave, and so I ordered the weave from the community, and um, it was taking a while. I was like, um, they're like, oh, we'll, oh, yeah. we'll ship it to you in like a week. Uh, two weeks now, wala pa. And syempre, I had to make the collection. Na. So I was like, what's happening? And then, so the weaves got to me, but like just a third of the quantity that I asked for. I wasn't mad or anything. I was just like, um, is there more? Is what, what happened? Yeah. So I found out that the community that I had initially talked to, there was a, what they call a rido. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Rido is like an internal, like familial sometimes war, like an eye for an eye kind of. And so in that community, no one could get in and no one could get out, but our our super courageous and brave head of security just snuck in and I got so angry because I said never to do that again. I mean, of course, I would never um, Put someone risk anything risk. like that, yeah, but those are and then the last time I just I had just come from there maybe like a month ago um, and so I was gonna go again to the community that I had already been working with um, but then when I got there they ran out of weaves and there was like a, some people left so that's also a challenge because, you know, Anya, I, I, I learn a lot from Anya when it comes to community development, right? Because it's something that Ant Hill um, is really, um, has really pioneered, I guess. Um, and so I ask her a lot of questions. And sadly, another challenge for us, I mean, much as I would love to systematize and organize the weaving community in Sulu right now, it's a bit uh, more difficult because of all the... Thing. So imagine going back to the old community and they had relocated because there was like a conflict the month before or whatever. So I had to go to another, an entirely new community this time. And it's like starting like feeling back to square one. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the challenges. But I mean, you know, I, I love what I do and I love my province. And <laughs> so, yeah, um, so this leads and me don't to... worry. We're always careful. I'm always careful. My parents are here. They're always like, oh my gosh, what are you doing again? But... Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're, I mean, I'm thanks I'm very, for being so supportive. We're very, I always dad. I always try to be very, very safe when I go there. <laughs> My dad's always like, ah, alis ka na naman. I always, I always just tell him I'm going to Zamboanga. He's like, alam ko, we're here going. But yeah. Well, okay. So this leads me to my next big question. We go through all these challenges and we put our, our lives at risk. We spend so much time um, at the grassroots at fe doing field work. Sometimes our husband, your husband, forgets about you already. Um, why? Well, why do we do this? Why do we invest so much in um, building relationships with our partners? Why do you think your presence as a designer or as a, or as a creative entrepreneur um, how does it add value to the work that they do? How does it add value to cultural preservation? Is that uh, why we keep doing what we do? You're correct there. Basically, we do what we do, to put it in simple terms, is to make a difference to those communities out there. Uh, Negros, I'm sure you've heard a lot of the things happening. You've heard it on the radio. It's not yet that peaceful, 100%. And, well, for me, the solution there really is to provide jobs, livelihood, and there will be peace. I mean, you know, we have to distribute the wealth. But more importantly, I think, when, well, you know, that's a good example. One of our weavers right now, who never had a house, have start, has started building his own house. So there, palang, you can see there's an impact happening already. And, you know, not only feels good to me, but... When people around that community sees that, then they're more encouraged to do, they get inspired. So there, there, there's a domino effect. So add value, why we, we had to add value? Because it also means the survival of the business. Because they can't just survive with one particular, you're talking about the design also, right? Yes. The add value. Like um, every year, Artifino has a marketing platform and a very powerful one at that. Uh, they always challenge us to come up with innovative designs year on year, come up with something new, and that trickles down to our communities, right? So what does it impact to them also? That well, we challenge them it, further. It, it gets them challenged, gets it, get things more excited for them, but important, and they understand, especially the communities where we're working, that it means also that they will be assured of a continuous livelihood all year round. 